So good afternoon everybody and welcome back to Norwich and the Norfolk Broads. Um, I haven't done a, a video for a while, obviously life's been a bit hectic uh, as we all have and um, just haven't had time. So uh, one of the videos I get asked for quite a lot is um, in regards to varnishing or finishing the canvases. Um, and I've been waiting to get um, some paintings together that I could do in a format that I could show you how I do the varnishing. So what I've got is a triptych which I did uh, on a video previously, which has dried. I, I let all my paintings dry for around about four weeks, so a month um, from the day I pour them. Um, and I don't do anything to them until I get to that point. I know people say that's rubbish, you can do it after two weeks or as soon as it dry you can do it and there isn't any issues. Um, yeah, that probably works for them. Um, I've tried it before and it didn't work. I think uh, on one of the ones I did early, when I put the varnish on, the paint actually stripped off it a little bit. Um, I've had occasions where I've done it early and especially on the darker sides of the canvas, um, they've gone cloudy. And I don't know why that is. It seemed to be like a white cloudy effect on it. So I don't take any chances. I think at the end of the day, if you've taken time to create a bit of art um, and somebody wants to buy it or you want to have it in your house, just wait a month. You know, it's, I know it's a, life, a lifetime for some people. And I think when you want to get something finished, it can be a while. But obviously, if you're going to finish it and it's going to look lovely and you know, you're going to be happy with it, just wait a month. Um, I use Liquitex. Now there are different Liquitex, but I use Liquitex um, high gloss varnish because that's the effect that I want to have on my paintings. And I think when it comes to varnishing and finishing paintings, I think what you've got to do is decide in yourself how you want the finished painting to be. Um, some people like them to be as they are without any varnish on them. Some people like them to have a matte effect or a satin effect. Um, I like high gloss. I think if I was brave enough, and I will do someday, I'd probably use um, resin. Um, but I think with canvases, I'm not confident enough to use it on a canvas for the weight and all the bits and pieces and, and mucking around with it. Um, I have thought about doing resin and I have thought about doing it on the plywood boards, canvas type things that I, that I do with some of the paintings because I think obviously it's sturdy enough to hold the, the resin on that. So that's why I, I do this. Um, I have tried the other, I've got them here. I've got the matte and I've got obviously the satin. Um, I used the satin before and I've used the matte and I just didn't like the effect that it gave on the after or the painting. I think what I've done here, I've got three, obviously the three paintings. This one I've not touched at all so you can see how that is, that's got nothing on it at all, no varnish, nothing, it's just as it dries, that's that one. This one I've put one coat on, um, which you can see the effect as it is on that, and this one I did, I put three on just to give you the effect, I mean look at that, it's just gorgeous, and that's the effect that I want to have on my paintings. Um, I think when it comes to varnishing and finishing, this video, like I say in all my videos, um, it's how I do it. I'm not saying it's right, I'm not saying it's wrong, I'm not saying that, you know, it's just that's the way it is. That's how I do them, this is how I finish them. If you like that effect, it's how I do it. I've watched other videos of people doing the same varnish with the Liquitex, um, and they've used these little spongy effects here. Um, I don't like it. It doesn't give me the effect that I want to get. And when I do it, you'll see what I'm after. Um, because when you're actually using the sponge, it's dragging the actual varnish off and it's clearing it off. I don't want that. What I want to do when I do my varnish is to put the layer of varnish on and leave it to settle. Um, and what it does, it's actually building up, so from there, from nothing, that now is given a layer of varnish which is settled over the canvas. So when I put the next layer on, it's gonna be more smooth, and then the next layer, it'll be smoother again. 
Um, when I apply my varnish, I use normal house paint brushes, and these are the ones that I use. From Amazon. Um, these obviously have got a nice bristle so when you you actually use the varnish it's going to give you a nice effect it's not going to draw it um, and they work for me. Every time I do um, a varnish in I use a new paintbrush um, and I think you'll probably find from the way I do things it's not the cheapest method and it, you know but that's the way I do it because once you've used them and you've left them they get hard, you wash them out, there's still bits of varnish in it, it doesn't work. So what I tend to do is I do this. So once I've started, yesterday I did the video, I did the uh, varnish yesterday. Um, and when I finished in the evening, I got one of these bags, which uh, you can get for freezers. And I put my brush and my varnish in it, I cling film the top so that I know when I come to use it, it's nice, it's not dried in any way, it's been kept nice and moist. And I can keep these for days because um, you don't want to go keep buying new brushes and keep new brown brushes because you know at the end of the day it's a cost, isn't it? Um, so that's how I put them away and store them. So, what I'm going to do. Is I'm going to explain how I would do the varnish. It's probably not going to take long. I'm we'll starting already because I've dropped some varnish on there, which is not good. Um, so I'll just move that one aside. And I'll move that one as soon as I've dropped some varnish on this one. What I would do is this is second coat. So normally on the first coat, I would go along like this, all the way along until I get the whole surface covered. And then what I do in the second coat, as I'm gonna do now, is I turn the canvas around. And then I use the brush. And go this way. Around the sides. Like so. Now, obviously you can see there's some bubbles. Um, and I've heard people say that they use blow torches to blow them out um, or to get rid of them. I don't. Um, you're going to say, oh, here he goes again. But all I do is I blow them with my mouth. And it gets rid. See they've all gone. What I don't do
is to go back in with a brush. Because if you go back in with a brush and put some more varnish on, you're going to give it an uneven surface and you don't want that. And then because you've blown over the edges, just go around the edge again. Make sure. Like so. And now I would leave that now to dry for, it recommends between three and four hours. Um, I've done it where I've left it for four hours and I've gone back in to put another coat and it's not been dry, whether, whether it's because it's in the garage and it, the weather's not right. Um, and it can draw, where it started to, to actually dry, then you put the brush over it, you tend to pull away some of the varnish which has started to dry. So I've got into this habit now where I'm just trying to be a bit more patient about life. Um, and it knows me, they'll probably know that's rubbish, but I do try. Um, so yesterday I did, when I did the first layer, I did them about two o'clock and I went back into the garage. Um, I think it was after the football, nine, 10 o'clock. Um, and it was perfect. So once again, this one's had three. And you can see I've dropped on here again, so I'm going to have to do it again. Um, but look at the shine on that. It's just gorgeous. So I'll do this one again. And you can see as it's going over, how much smoother it is now after it's had three layers. Because what's happened underneath, the varnish has actually dried and it's created a coating on the canvas. So when you've got all the... Um, canvas ridges uh, and bits and pieces that's all been taken over because the actual varnish has actually gone over the top of it um, and created a nice varnish film on top of it this can be expensive method because if you've got a larger canvas like I do 30 by 30s um, and you're giving them three to four layers of varnish, <laughs> that mounts up. Um, I think that large container there was 946 mils. That cost me from Amazon, I think it was around about 23 to 25 pound. So it is expensive, but I think if you don't want to use resin and you want to use varnish by doing this three to four coats you're going to get that effect that you want which is just it's almost like a resin effect i don't think you'll ever get that sort of effect because uh, i understand for people that use resin you're only using one coat um, and you're getting that effect straight away
So, I've done this all a bit back to front because obviously I dripped some varnish on both canvases. And I didn't want it to settle because what tends to happen, um, if you were to drop some varnish on it, leave it, obviously it's, it starts to set quite quickly. Um, which then when you put your next layer on, it's, it's going to layer. So this is the first layer, this is with nothing on it, this is just as it is. And you can see the difference between the actual two that I've done. Um, you know, it's quite dramatic. Some people like it like this. I think some people leave them like this until a customer wants the actual canvas or orders the painting. Because then they can give them the option if they want to have a satin or a matte or the high gloss varnish. Um, and that's probably a nice option to give the customer. I think sometimes when you give a customer too much choice, you can end up getting yourself in a bit of a pickle. So I tend to just do them as, as I like them. And then if somebody wants them, fantastic. So what I do with the first one, and people say to me, oh, do you get brush strokes? Do you get layering? Do you get, you know, do you get that effect? Um, yeah, you do. I don't worry about it because I'm putting three or four varnish layers on. If you're going to put one layer of varnish on, um, then, you know, you are going to probably get streaks and you are probably going to get, you know, effects that you don't probably want. Um, like I said, start off, I would go this way, which I'm going to show you now. The problem that I find with the longer strokes with the varnish that you've got is you don't get a clean swipe. And if you don't get a clean swipe, you've got tend to get an unevenness. So if I was to come along here and stop and then put some more varnish to come along, it can be a little bit uneven. But what tends to happen is that it will settle. And I think if you're using the larger canvases, like a 30 by 30 and you've got quite a lot of pattern on them. What I like to do is to make sure you cover the black or the dark blue effect, get to the pattern, stop, and then start again because it'll settle into the pattern and you won't see it if it doesn't actually come straight. But what I find to happen with doing the three to four layers, it smooths itself out. And because you see, I put quite a lot of varnish onto the actual painting, um, it will level out as you do it. But I think if you're doing one layer, possibly two, you might have a bit of a problem with it. But I think it's like anything, it just comes down to, like I said again, how you want your painting to look, what sort of effect you want your painting to have. So, I should have done this one first, but because, like I say, I dropped the varnish on it, I had to do the other two. So what I'll do is, when you put the varnish in, don't stir it. Um, I see people that say that they add water to it. I don't know why you're adding water to the varnish. It says not to dilute. Um, so whether it's for the fact that they're trying to save money or somebody will probably tell me, I don't know, and I'm not knocking it. If that works for you, fantastic. It's not, it's not what it says to do. It's not what's on the tin. Don't dilute it. Don't go staking it and shaking it and stirring it. When you put it into the pot, I would leave that pot for 10 to 15 minutes because when you actually pour it in, you tend to get bubbles and then if you were to put the bait brush from there straight onto the canvas you are going to get bubbles so just let it settle for a bit um, and yeah that's it so what I'll do and like I said you're not going to get all the way across so find that area
make sure you get these edges and on the first couple of varnishes that you do make sure you give them a good even coat you are going to get drips come down the sides try and get as much of the drips as you can when you do the sides I don't even tend to worry about the bubbles on the first layer to be quite honest when you blow on the first layer they tend to burst and you can see the little effect it doesn't matter because I'm going to put another couple of layers on so I don't really worry about it I used to in the beginning but it doesn't really matter the other thing which I find, and you can probably see it here, and the bigger ones it's more of a drama, is when you're putting the actual swipe of a varnish across on the darker colours, it tends to be quite a lot of varnish on there because it's you know your, your paintbrush is full of it. So sometimes what I'll do is I'll come in a bit and put dab the brush to get some off and then go back and drag it across, which when we'll get rid of that effect. If you don't let this dry properly. There's two things that will happen, like I say, you will get the effect that you're going to pull the varnish off when you put the, put the brush across it. Which you can resolve by letting it dry completely again and then putting another coat on, probably another two coats on top. Because you're putting a thicker layer on top of it, it will cover up the actual bit that you've taken away. So don't panic about that. Um, you can see here on this one, it's quite uneven. Like I say, it's a first layer. If you were going to put one layer on, I might use these because you're taking everything off and you're giving a, a, a layer. But like I say, the whole process for me is to have that resin effect, which you get when you put the extra layers on. So that's how I do my varnishing. Um, it's not the easiest process in the world. It's the part of the whole process of painting that I actually hate the most. Uh, and poor old Carol has to go through the misery of every time I start to do three or four paintings that, you know, I'm not happy. It's not level uh, until I get that right effect. But I think once you've finished it and once you've got it, you, I honestly I feel you just can't beat it. It gives you that real nice finish. Um, I've had customers who have said to me when the paintings have come, um, it's just like glass and that's what I want to get and I think you can see that with this one this will dry and it will give you that effect which I had earlier on um, and these will be really stunning I'm really happy with this painting it was one of these that I did on off chance I wasn't sure it was going to work um, I think it's sold, somebody's asked for it, but again, there's been no deposit, so we'll just say it's not sold. But I'll probably, what I'll do with these now is see how this comes. Once it dries, I'll bring this up to the three levels and I'll give this an extra one and then it'll be fairly similar. And I think you'll see it'll be quite nice. The smaller canvases are easy, um, the 8x8s that I do, I only give them one or two layers because they're smaller canvases um, and you get a nice even sweep across when you use the brush. The bigger ones, like I said, 30x30s or the 36x24s, um, yeah, it's a fight, it's a struggle because you know they are so big and you're using the swipe that you probably have to do two or three brush, individual brush strokes across. Um, but they come out in the end quite nice so that's the varnishing process like I say Liquitex high gloss varnish 
normal paint brushes, a little tub, which are these takeaway Chinese takeaway tubs that I use. When I'm finished, I like to say, back into its bag, like so. Tie it off so you've got no air going into it, like that. And that's it. And that is varnishing. I know a lot of people struggle with it. I know a lot of people have a little drama with it. It's like anything, I think the more you do it, the happier you're gonna get. Um, the other thing I'd recommend is having a tweezers. Um, I've got two dogs. Um, not hairy dogs, but I've got two dogs. I used to have a, a long-haired German Shepherd, and believe me, there was hair everywhere. Um, but the two I've got aren't hairy type of dogs, so I'm okay. But you do tend to get hairs. Normally, if I was doing a bigger painting, I would have my uh, boiler suit thing on, so there's no hairs on any of the jumpers. You can see those hairs here. They do tend to fall. You don't see them when you're looking at them. Um, you come back in a couple of hours when it's dry, and you think, oh, God, there's a hair. So little tweezers and that's about it um i hope that's been informative um like i say it's my style it's how i do it it's not everybody's um and i think what you'll find in these sort of videos is find your own style find how you want to have it and like i say it's the effect that you want to come out with at the end if you want satin there's satin varnish if you want matte there's matte the high gloss is there spray cans there's all sorts um this is what i use it's what i felt you know it's what for me and my painting style it brings out the colors like you say in the, in the original you know it was quite dull because you'd lost all the paint when it had dried it just brings everything back out um and you can see by looking at it the effect it gives so that's it varnishing um i'll put this on youtube um, and facebook and once the paintings are dry and finished, I'll put the paintings on Facebook on the normal sites that I do. And obviously my, uh, my own Facebook site, Don Gregor Art. I'm, and my Instagram, Don Gregor 123 um, And I do have a website, which is dongregor.com. A lot of Don Gregors. Um, so I hope that's been informative. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and once again, thank you and goodbye from Norwich and the Norfolk Broads.